Morning and Hope. Yeah, sorry guys, I, I meet myself. I don't even know how I meet myself. I'm sorry. Now I can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can. Okay, so I'm sorry, guys. Uh the, the things that I was trying to say, like being a being a consistent trader, if you want to understand about the market, there is five keywords. I send you guys this video and I apply these things like every single day. The first thing is you need to be consistent. When you, we talk about consistency, is even if you are making $1 a day and you know how to protect your $1, believe me, it's going to be proper for you. Then the second thing is you need to have a discipline. A discipline on my side is uh, I decide, okay, I'm going only to trade. Uh, I'm going only to trade, let's say, NASDAQ, USA, 30 gold, V75. But every single week, every single week, I'm, uh, I'm doing something uh, what do you call uh, these people? I told them to join. They don't. They don't join. You see this kind of stuff, guys. Okay, can someone say they can join now? I I unlock the meeting again. And uh, the last one, you need to have uh, confidence, patience, and passion. The passion is for you to do these things like every single day. You love your charts because you know you are working toward your. Uh, financial freedom. So there is five things that I look most of the time in the chart. Why did I write this shit yesterday? No, it's not on this book. There is five things that I'm looking in the chart like every single day when I want to trade. Uh, that is not a book. It's just me making my notes. This one I'm saying this book. Is me making my note because I like wait, making notes every every single day. So, is there a way of uh, maybe allowing people to join all of them at once? Because yo, this thing now is going to stop us now from talking. Oh, la, 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 la. 
there is no way to allow all of them to just take in. Uh, let me see. Okay, guys. Yeah, so the first things that I normally look in the market is, uh, is about the, 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 the market structure. Then I look for my range. Then after my range, what I look again is, um, what do you call? I look again at, uh, let's say the price imbalance. I look at Asian range, uh, what do you call Asian range? This one we cannot explain here. Maybe another day I will explain. Then I'll look for the SND. SND is where I see most of the time the, the what you call the, um, uh, the point of interest where there is a strong supplier and demand, all those, those stuff. Then I look at liquidity. I look at liquidity. Then I look also at the continuation trend. The continuation trend is, let's say, the one we call QML. The one we call QML, um, sorry, SR flip, RS flip, breaker, mitigation, block, all those stuff. So I look at them for me to be able to see uh, what is happening. Then also session time, you know, guys, I like to trade more New York, but also sometimes I do focus on London. Then we have the price cycle and also uh, PA. On the PA, I look at 3D, I look at uh, FOZ, take out zone. Then CPLQ, CPLQ, uh, CPLQ, that is what we call a compression liquidity. Then I also look at the momentum. How is the market going to my zone? So I look also at uh, those things for me to be able to do it, to catch my trade. So what the hell, why did I delete it? I hope you guys can see that. So this is what I look most of the time. The only thing that I need to understand is my market structure. That is the first things I need to see. Let's say example, on, in this case, the one that we have. If you check, oh, let me just go like this. If you check this eye and you check this law and also this one here and this one here. So what are you gonna tell yourself is just that when market break this area, when market break this area, for me to have a confirmation of the higher point of structure, I need to see where was the last time market break structure. And I had a discussion with one of the guy about this one. Let's say market is going to the upside like this. Then market break this area. Market goes and create another level here and go to the upside. Now I need to ask you guys a question. Is this one, the ILO, or we are just going to consider this one as our ILO, and where market is going to make a reversal, then that is going to be the II. Let's say you're looking the market maybe in daily time frame. Can you guys answer me? Can you repeat the question again, my bro? The question is, market go to the upside, create this I, then pull inside, went to the upside and break this area. When it break the area, then it creates another higher eye somewhere here. Is this one a valid eye or is not a valid eye? A eye, eye, eye low. This one here. That is a it's not, not valid, a valid my law. Bro. It's, not valid. it's not, not valid, my bro. Because it's it's above, uh, it, it, it did not go below the 50%. Okay, this, this, is what I was, this is what I wanted to explain to you guys here. If you can check here, this is where we have the original movement. The movement started from here and the stop here. The discussion I have, one of the guy he was, he told me, according to him, this is a structure point. So this he one- flip it to share it like this. You are saying? So to share, you perfect. No, 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 it's not to shell, the one I discussed with him. Okay, my bro, sorry. So if, if you check here, most of the people what they did consider is just that this one is the ILO compared to this one. And according to me, since this one did not come inside, it's not a structure point to me. So this one is going to act as a liquidity. I'm sure I did even a video about this one long time ago. 
where I was saying marketers to come and run this area, I give exactly this buy zone for market to come and buy inside this area here. This is where I was expecting market to come and buy. Then what we need to understand is just that, okay, all this from here, from this low to this eye, this is our range where we are trading. So when markets break this level here, took out this low here, then we know that we have a change of character. So meaning that we're gonna wait, this one is gonna happen on weekly time frame because this one does not show weekly time frame. Let me just share the other screen. Then I'm gonna come back to this one. So what we see on weekly time frame. So if you check on weekly time frame, what are you gonna see? What are you gonna see? What is this? Let me check this. Oh, okay. That's okay. So what you're gonna see is just that we had this hidden base. The one was resting here after market break this zone. Then this one was acting as liquidity. Start from this eye, all this area was acting as liquidity that market supposed to come and run. This is the one that we call market is a red break structure, then market return to it. If you wanna expect market to change a the character, then you wanna see market take out this low because this low was the one that produced this eye. But here in between, we have the internal liquidity that internal liquidity that market was creating when it was going to the upside. So market has to come and seek all those liquidity for them to be able again to, uh, to continue with the, with the same trend. And this is what happened. Now here come another story. I'm sure I did the video again from this area. Okay, we know where we have the original movement. We know where market, we're expecting market to, to start buying, but what do you wait for, for you to be able to catch the movement? So every time when market, let's say if you check on weekly on, uh, on H4, you're gonna see H4 did break the structure somewhere here. This is H4, not daily, whatever. Then H4 breaks structure somewhere. When you see this one, when market break this structure somewhere here, what do you wait for now? You are waiting for market to pull back. When market is pulling back, this is what we call a trading confirmation. So you wanna see a confirmation before you take a trade. Yes, there is people that they can rush. Let's say maybe they see something like this. Even my way of trading, I always rush the trades because I take most of the time those higher risk entry. But if you want to protect your capital, you need to wait for a confirmation because the higher risk trades, let's say you can rush a trade, like say from here, you take maybe a sell position. Let's say here the way market reject, you take a sell position. The next candlestick that open, then go with you to the upside, kick you out. Next minute, you have a, you have a clear direction of where market is going, but you could not, but you could not get the proper direction for you to, uh, let's say, to keep your patience and take a, a proper entry so that the market can allow you to go to the downside. Then when you rush, let's say you put even a stop loss at, the, at the, your entry, then market just come back and take you out. It's the same scenario like what happened here. Let's say someone took the entry here in between. This is your entry, you go to the downside, but if you check, let's say on H1 or M15 somewhere here, you need to wait for market to come and take out this low because here we have a failure swing, then market break structure here, then market create liquidity inside. So what you're gonna wait for is now to come and refine your entry here so that you can be able to go to the downside. But if you rush, let's say you rush a trade here, you put even a stop loss at the break even because you, you saw all these things. You are saying I'm holding the trade, market is going my way. The next minute market just come, kick you out, then go again your way. Now you start asking yourself question, what happened? I know the direction, but what end up happening? So this is why it's, it requires to us to understand where the trading range, where we are trading right now. Let's say if you check on this case, you're gonna see from this high to this low, this was, oh la la, what is this one? This was our range where we have been trading. And inside this one, so we need to take our Fibonacci for us to understand, okay, this is my range. Then if you wanna take the trades, I have to take the trades above the 50%. This thing is known by everyone. You can go learn from ICT, ICT teach about this. Things. When you have this, uh, you, need to, you need to make sure you take your trades above the 50%. Then above the 50%, what you have to look also, you need to understand 
where is the liquidity? Where is the level of liquidity? Where market is gonna seek that liquidity? Because we do understand most of the people what they said, liquidity is only about the high in between and the low in between. This is what people, they call liquidity. Or when market get at a certain area start consolidating, then the people, they start calling liquidity. But there is also some block that is also acting as a liquidity. More special when that block is acting like an FTR. If you check this block, this block here acts as an FTR because it's failure to return to where we have a supplier level. Because on this area, there is a QML. I think I've already explained about this video. If you guys want, you can go on my YouTube. You'll find I explain about this area, how someone could get the entry from here just by ignoring this liquidity. You know, this is a liquidity that market has to seek because this liquidity. Yo guys, this thing of uh, accepting people every minute, I'm tired. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, this is a liquidity. Let's say if we go to H4, you're going to see that one was acting as no, a liquidity. No, isn't it the call inducement? You are saying? This is the one people they call inducement, but it's an FTR. It's just a new name, okay. a brand new name. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, it's called, uh, it's called FTR. Market okay, failure okay. to return to a level where there is okay. a strong, where there is a strong supply level. As we can check all this movement, the one that's happened here, you know already this consolidation, the one happening here was what we call the MPL King. I told you guys there was an, a QML on this zone. This is the QML I was talking about. We have mm. the QML, where, because I know these things, I trade this area, I know this is a QML. We had the QML that was there. And this QML had an MPL. Market mm. consolidates at the zone where we have, let me change the color of this one. As you can check the way market consolidates here, but this area here failed to return to this QML level. Then market continue more to the downside. At the same time, it creates this zone here. If you check, let's say on daily time frame, you're gonna see this zone here. It's acting like a block, and what people they will try to see. Okay, I have a block. I'm going to use open to fifty percent. While market is not gonna do that because when you check the other time frame, you understand that okay, market is wanna do what? Market wanna seek liquidity. Market wanna seek liquidity. I think someone asked me about the SDE. Uh, I don't like doing this one. The SDE. My, the way I consider my SDE, my SDE has to be something like this. Uh, let's say I have, I have uh, a demand zone. This is my demand zone. Then I wanna see how market is coming to play on this demand zone. So when we break this demand zone, then all this area become my SDE. Then here I need to have my SGB. So then what I wait for is for market to create liquidity then the one HLZ called Flippy, when market create a Flippy, then I'm gonna take my entry inside this box. Again, inside this box, I wanna see if there was an FTR, the one that people call uh, inducement, if it was there, then I'm gonna do something like this for me to go with it to the downside. This is what happened here. Now here come the story. Let's say you are not sure how you're gonna take a trade from here. Are you gonna take exactly when market get there or you have to wait for a confirmation? This is what you have to do. Then you look for the candlestick that took liquidity. Where is the candlestick that took liquidity from this area? This is your candlestick that took liquidity on this zone. And remember, I explained to you guys in so many of my video, like a break of structure, sometimes people, they wait only for candlestick to happen. But me, what I check most of the time also is when we have, let's say a demand, you see this candlestick here, this is a demand candlestick. So when markets break this demand candlestick, the next minute I wanna refine my entry, I wanna refine it, uh, I can go to low time frame. let's say this is uh, H4, then I can go to low time frame on this one because I already have my demand level. So now I can go to M15, as the way I explained to you guys what you call the micro and micro zone. We get a level, this is the H4 micro zone, then I wanna refine my entry for me to be able to catch the movement from here. Because if I rush here, I, I take my trade. What confirmation must I have to say that this market is gonna continue going my way? No, I don't have any confirmation, but I wanna see a change of character. That change of character is 
when markets break a structure somewhere and give me a confirmation, then I'm gonna look for two things. One is how is the market approaching the level that I wanna, I wanna monitor. Yo, guys, this thing is refused to go back. What the hell? Let me share this one. I'm sure maybe I'm gonna go back. It's H4. H4 zone. Is it? Uh, is here. This is the H4. And if you guys remember, I did this video on my YouTube. It's just that you guys, I don't know what you are watching in the YouTube. <laughs> What is the zone? What is the zone? What is the zone? Okay, this is the zone. So when I have this zone, remember this is this is the H4. This is the H4 microzone, the one that I refine. I get the level here. And imagine if I rush my trades from this area. This is where I took my trade. What is going to happen? This week here is gonna come and kick me out. So what I wanna see now, this law here was the one that produced this higher point. And here in between, what do you see? What did the market create? Market create this area. Market create area. So if we can check, so, bro, I have a doubt. Can I ask? Yeah, you can ask me. Bro, so the first tab, you don't trust the first tab, right? You want the market to take away the high. What, what I normally do, like for people that they know how I trade, I always catch this movement because I take a trade already straight when market gets in my zone. But what I'm trying to advise you is not a proper way of trading. Why is not a proper way of trading? Because you still have a pressure, let's say in this case, you still have a pressure of market going to the upside. But when market gets here, you, you take the sell because of the reaction. The next minute, if you're holding your sell, then markets come and pick you out. Yes, yes. You so see? you wanna enter at this, like <clears throat> the second tab. Yes, now you need, you need to see, let's say like in this case, do you see what happened on this zone? How market creates? Now, what you wanna compare, like on the beginning, the way I said, I look at the momentum to see what is happening, the way market is going to the uh, to come to the downside. Check like the way market went to the downside. Compare to this one, the way market pushed to the upside. Okay. There is a difference. There is a loss of momentum going to the upside. So already for me, it's a confirmation of saying, market, when it get to my zone, I just need to refine my zone for me to be able to do it, to catch the movement. And if you want to trade the pullback, let's say market gets here, you see this area, markets come and run this liquidity. When we run the liquidity, then we create a new eye. But what do you wait for? Since we break the structure again, oh, this meeting is about to end. What the hell? Since we create this eye point, this is the eye point that we created. Then markets come and create a liquidity inside here. So what do you wait for? You refine your entry, let's say on this zone, you come and refine your entry from there. Then you are taking, this is what we call a confirmation. This one is a risk entry. Even Michael teach about this thing. It's called low risk buy. This one is a low risk buy. Because you have all confirmation of saying, okay, market is gonna go to my way. And let me show you guys, because my thing is about to end. Let me show you here. Okay. So it is a buy to sell trade. Yes. Let's say here, if you guys remember, I, I did make a video of saying this was my range where I was trading from this eye. So this low to that eye, we grab liquidity, we break structure here. Then we start looking of how market is going to the downside. If you check here, I did mark this area, like this area is gonna be my zone. And if you go to low time frame, you're gonna see inside here, we have the H4 QML. Then when I saw the zone like this, what I'm waiting for is to see how market is coming to my to the downside. Again, inside the, let's say we go to H4. 
Let me show you something on H4. If we go to H4, then when you are trading, let's say you are trading your range. What you are going to understand, since market created this low, like from here to here, mm. then market created this high. Mm. So right now, what you're gonna see, market is trading inside this zone. So we are trading here. This is our current range to this low. Mm. And mm. we need to see now, here in between, where is the liquidity that market has to seek? As you can check, all this is a part of the liquidity that market has to seek and we need to look, let's say we take our Fibonacci we put, then we look for the 50%, where is our 50% zone? And then we're gonna look for a trade to do it, to sell above the 50%, this is our fifth, uh, above the 50%. And this is gonna be our zone, like the premium. Premium started from here until this one. So from there, this is where we need to refine the entry. Now, here was my zone. I saw there was a QML here on H4. This is the QML is there on H4. Then how do I take the trades? Let's say I go to M15. This is how I need to take my trades on M15. The QML is there. So I need to see a confirmation of saying, okay, this is my zone. Check out my, my, my H4 zone is big. Let's say if I take the trades here, this one is gonna take me out. If I take the trades again here, this one is gonna come and take me out. I need to see market break the major point of structure. This was my major point of structure because if you check like this, you're gonna see this area was the major zone of structure. Why people they get confused because check it, this eye was being created here oh, before so after the break. So now when we break, when we break this area, now I get a confirmation of saying market has to do what market has to buy. The only thing that I wanna see is okay, this is my range. Then I need to see where there is a liquidity, where is market going to seek that liquidity and where market is going to buy. So this is what I'm mm -hmm. waiting for. Or if you want here, here, there is a, an accumulation, you could refine your entry and take the entry from the test level. But when you want the higher confirmation of getting a clear picture of where market is going, remember right now we are trading a pullback, but from that pullback, we wanna see what market is giving us. Then from here, you see this is this is what we call a breaker. In supply and demand, we call it the RIS flip because this one took out all the liquidity that was resting here. You see here we have like equal loss, market come and took, but this was the block that produced to take out this area. When market was going to the upside, we expected market to come in, buy a sell from here to come again to the downside, but they manipulate the zone. Then they went to the upside, the break structure. Now here come a story. Do you see how they create this zone here? This zone they created to become as a liquidity for them to come and buy from here. Then what you're gonna see most of the people, they'll say, okay, this is the base because we have a rally, base, rally, the market has to come back and we're gonna continue buying. But you need to understand why that zone was being created. And even if you check the cycle, what you're gonna understand for yourself is, we have one, we have the pullback, we have two, we have the pullback and we have three. Then when we have the correction, I explained on my previous video, the correction has to give you the ABC pattern. Then that ABC pattern, the last C is the one that is gonna go more to the downside. It's gonna, it's gonna give you a deep retracement either 61% or 70% of this range. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Oh. You see, this is the range. Then if you check, we have 61% here. Then if you add another level, you're gonna see this area must be 2.5%. Then that is the correction, the movement that is giving us. Already this is a signal to us that, okay, we're gonna take a trade here. So yes. what do you do now? You need to take a trade on every pullback. But the mistake yeah, yeah. of the people they're doing is, we are anticipating market to start buying, the market to start selling, while we know the trends. Market is already showing us, I have a change of character from this area. Market is wanna continue buying, but people now they try to catch all this, uh, forgetting the big picture of what market is showing. I hope guys are making sense. Yeah. So now people, they'll try to forget the big picture of what is happening. When you are buying here, you know the last point that you're gonna target again, this eye. It's become a weak eye. Why? Because it's failed to break the law. Then you don't have to come and look for a sell again on this area. You know already that is gonna be your external liquidity market has to run that liquidity. 
then market has to run that liquidity, the one that was resting there. So again, when you have a pullback, every time you have a pullback, there is two things you wanna check. You, you, you find your, your, your range, you know already my range, let's say from here, my range started from this low to this high. Then I wanna check where is all those liquidity. Do you see how the block is acting like a liquidity? All this block, this block was just creating on purpose of saying, people they'll come and say, okay, I'm gonna buy from here. Do you know how many people they put their orders from this block alone? Because they believe this block is going to hold. So they have to come and place their buy for them to continue again to the upside. But check what happened. This block has so many stop loss. They come, they try to lie to people that we wanna buy. To even call more people to come and jump. You just buy small, then drop. But the original movement was where? Was this side, you see. Then they get here, they are buying again. So every time you have all those pullback, the only thing that you need to see is to identify which current range are you trading on and where is the liquidity? How do you seek all those liquidity? Then when you see them, you're gonna take, a, you're gonna take your entry without even having an issue. Let's say even on this case here, you see, uh, this one, I think I have to go to H1, okay. Check did you teach a uh, Wyckoff on your channel? Uh, I did teach long time, man, but right now I, I don't even teach it. Yo, maybe I'm Do you use it much or not? Nah? Hmm? Do you use Wyckoff much or not? Nah? I use I use it, let's say, on my decision point. Eh? I don't look at Wyckoff more. Let's say like here, the way I saw it. Let me go to low time frame. Let's say like there. Yo, this is getting really bad. And, uh, Next time when I've graded, then we're gonna have a proper zoom. Just explaining fast for you guys to. You see, let's say in this case, you see the way it is here. Then, okay, I'm going to refund from here. Oh, I'm gonna take my entry. Then I look out the collective orders. So yeah, this is how I look on in terms of white off. Is the same scenario like what happened on? Uh, let me show you guys on. Uh, uh, this one. Complicated, my bro. Wake off. Yes, bro. Wake off seems complicated. Uh, it's not that complicated. No, I can never fucking look at that shit on live. I can never picture it hands. Like, I just use this and these Yeah, well, Wake off is not that complicated. You just need to understand your change of character and this other stuff. Let's say if you check here, I'm sure if you check here, I did send this picture because. I saw the way market was doing these things here. I even sent to one of the guy. I told oh, him. Can I ask one thing, mm. bro? When when are we going now, bro? You access to the car chart lab. I don't get you, bro. Chart lab, chart lab. Mm. You said you'll do access soon. Yeah, I'm gonna give you guys the access. Uh, I'll see maybe on Monday tomorrow too. I'll give you guys. Thank you, thank you, my bro. So guys, I hope next time I'm gonna do a proper Zoom meeting. I'm sorry for this one, it was not okay. It was just a quick one, touch there and here. But uh, uh, we're gonna do a Zoom meeting again when I upgrade my Zoom, because here is gonna end. And you know, it's Sunday. I just wanna relax and play my FIFA. <laughs> Thank you so much. Then I'm gonna no, send no. you guys a list of the things that I'm looking in the market. So whoever is gonna need it, then he has also to see.